Welcome to Abacus Tutorials. We'll have Lifu Wang walk us through the problem description now. Thank you, Lifu. Thank you, Professor Goyo, and hi, everyone. Welcome to another Final Element Method tutorial. <clears throat> Today, uh, we are going to discuss how do we run a sample simulation about the wing, composite wings in Abacus. Today's video will be split into two parts. The first part, uh, we will discuss about how do we make simple models, CAD models using Abacus. Uh, we will discuss several approach approaches to it. And the second part, we are going to learn how do we design the composite layout for the with certain failure criteria and how do we uh, start, how do we obtain the strength for each layer of composites? Let's start with the problem statement. So this is a unit <clears throat> cross-sections plot for the NASA 2414 airfield uh, and all the sampling points is listed here. And you can find also find it in this data here. And <clears throat> we are going to design a composite elevator showing here. The composite elevator is combined with mainly four parts. The first part is the airfield shell, which is the blue dots here. Second part is the stiffening shell, which is the black curve following the same uh, path of the composite airfield shell. And the third part is the ribs that goes in the longitudinal direction of the wings to support the bending of the composites. And the last one is the spars. <clears throat> The spars is uh, lying transversely about the wing. And usually we have more than four here, but uh, in this project, just to simplify the model, we use four, only four spars. So the function for spars is to uh, support the cross-section so that it won't, the cross-section will not deform. It will greatly improve the shear rigidity and also it will improve the buckling effect, which we will show later in the result bar. So the geometry for the, um, for the elevator is like a trapezoidal, but um, the bottom has, a, or the base has a, a width of 7.42 meters while the tip as 1.85 meters, which means the same geometry, you need to scale it by a scaling factor S. Uh, the tip, you should have it S equals to 1.85, while at the bottom, you should have a scaling factor 7.42. So, so, um, Plus, this is not uh, laying transversely, uh, longitudinally. So we need to transversely move this uh, uh, sparse uh, to the location. I put this red dots for the reference location. So let's assume that the dots, uh, let me show you, show this. Let's assume the dots here has a coordinate of zero, zero. So the coordinate for all these four reference points I was given here, it was calculated to be minus 7.42 plus 7.02 minus 1.85 times layer i is over four. For example, here i equals to one, here i equals to two, here i equals to three. Also for y, for y direction, it has something like this. And the scaling factor, we are going to consider the tip cross-section 1.85 as a base. 
so the scaling factor for the first layer will be the cross section width of this one divided by 1.85. And the formula, scaling factor formulas is also given here. 7.42 divided by 1.85 minus one times i over four plus one. And all the scaling factor and the star point of x I was shown, I already give you the values here. You can directly use it. So, uh, in terms of material properties, here is, uh, after we finish building a model, start from here, we're going to assign composites to the materials, to the geometry. So the material we use is from this website, which ha contains a lot of uh, useful informations, material information for composites. And this is one of the composites we use is 2510, uh, woven composite, fiber composites. And from the mechanical test, we can have the E11 equals to 55 gigapascal equals to E22. For woven composite, the unit direction is the uh, youth, sorry, the unit direction is U3. So, and U1 and U2 are the transversely, uh, are the isotropic plane of it. So, Material property for one and two are the same. And the implant shear through the mechanical test we can get is 4.3. And out of, out of plane shear, it's not showing here. And we assume it to be one gigapascal. Usually it's not large. And also this value will not affect your uh, results a lot. You can try different material properties and it should be almost the same. Finally, um, the thickness for each composite plies is uh, 0.21 millimeter, which is 0 0.00021 meters. And so this is how we uh, represent the stacking sequence of composites. For the airfield base, uh, we have zero plus minus 30 and 90 and symmetric. So we're going to to symmetric layer here. And N means uh, we repeat this in total 10 layups for how many times? So we are going to first study N equals to one, and then we are going to try to increase the N until it match some kind of failure criteria. And for the ribs, spars, and stiffness shell, which we we also show it here for those frames. We use the composite layup that has zero uh, 45, uh, double 45 layers and then 90 degrees and also symmetric. And this M is also something you need to uh, design yourself what should be the number of M here. And finally, um, Oh, remember this S means symmetric. So we have two ways in Abacus to add the symmetric plies, and I'll show you later. So about the loading, when the flight coming with the, uh, is on working. So the lifting force, we can simplify it as a pressure here. So usually, uh, this pressure is not unique. Uh, you can have a you can have a force distribution along the geometry. For example, the force at the edge may be larger, while the force at the base may be smaller. Uh, but here we are doing a boundary test, which means we find the boundary value for the variating case, so that if this give you some better, some good results, then you don't need to uh, worry about the variation of the forces. So the value we use here is considering the air at the 12, uh, 12 south meters height, the air density 0 0.3, 0 uh, 0 0.30267 kilograms per meter cube. And the, the air speed is 26, uh, 265, 
0.5 meters per second. And we assume a loading factor A equals to three in this calculations. And also the coefficient for the lifting uh, is 0 0.7 at a five degrees of uh, the, the five degrees of uh, angle. So the pressure is calculated by one half of the density times velocity times the loading factor times the uh, coefficient of lift. So after calculation, it should, it should be 22.4 kilopascal. And then uh, finally, we decide our failure criterion to be strain-based, which is typical in composites. And in tension direction, we want, uh, uh, we have a uh, elongation allowable. The allowable elongation strain is 0.9%, which is 0 0.009 uh, or 9E minus three. And compressional elongation allowable strains is 0.5%, which is, uh, I think I missed one uh, zero here. Oh, no, no, it's, it's this. So 0 0.005, which also means 5E minus three. And we also add a design factor of safety 1.4, a uh, 1.5 here. So usually we have two ways to apply this factor of safety. The first way is we apply the loading we want and then in the result we uh, divide our result by this factor of safety and compare it to our strain, uh, strain of uh, allowable or uh, sorry, multiply our result with 1.5 and compare with strain of allowable here. And the other way we do is also pretty useful is we can, since we're doing a linear analysis, so we what we can do is we multiply 1.5 to the pressure or the designed load so that all the result will be magnified by 1.5. And then we can directly compare the result with the with the uh, failure criterion or the uh, maximum allowable string. And so in here in this problem, we're going to do this use the second way to do it. So it's uh, third, we are going to apply thirty three point six kilopascal pressure at the bottom of the elevator. So now let's see how do we uh, do abacus part 